So I know that a, a lot of people have been using the InPaint tool, InPainting brush. Uh, if you are in, let's take you back to InDesign. Let's say you are in, if you are in InDesign and you want to do a the InPaint brush, which is similar to if you've come from the Photoshop world, it is the context aware for which has some sort of basic things and, and the finish of it is not that nice and smooth as far as I'm concerned. That's just very subjective personal opinion. However, the inpainting brush inside Affinity Photo takes things just to the next level and I'll show you what I mean by it. So if I want to remove this name and yeah, and, you know, maybe these elements and the Allergy giant, I'll leave that in there. Um, how do I go about it? I can go File, Edit in Photo, go into Photo, and I'm sitting with the file here. Now, the normal process would be you'd go down and you'd look for your Ink Paint Brush tool. Okay, if you click on there, you might have it showing as the Healing Brush because whatever tool was used last will show up as an icon here. If you don't see it in this menu, you can go, let me just see, um, okay, under View, there's the customize toolbar and toggle UI um, and we want to go to customize tools or customize toolbar one of the two here so this is the one let's check this one okay so that's the one we go to let me go again there it's on customize tools so it will bring this dialog open and then you can take let's say we're going to take this differential tool I can drag it down here then it will become part of the tool panel that we're working okay or we can just take it away this is a nice separator if you want to put a separator between certain categories of tools that you're developing or drag it away and at the bottom here you can select how many of these tool columns you want to have visible i prefer just using two if you put it at one then they all run all down the side yeah okay so we'll go on to two and i'll just close that but if you don't have that in painting brush then that's how you can go get it you'll go view customize tools and then drag the relevant one across okay so this is usually how it's done we go to in painting and with the in painting i have the ability to change the size of the uh, circle affecting or i can use the square brackets to do its thing um, then you have all these other settings the opacity it's just going to mean the effect that you're going to apply uh, if you change the opacity will be diminished by whichever percent um, the flow the hardness the edges sort of thing so if I go to an edge that's down over there um, it will have a softer uh, edge when it's busy doing its its marking of the area okay but I'll leave everything at 100 um, percent so if the normal way of doing it is we'll come onto the layer and I would go in paint this area and it would do an in painting for me and it does it pretty well okay so we go there and we come there okay it's pulling that in so this this is the kind of way you know we do all this this painting of these areas if you're going to do a biggish area you can see here now the clouds have sort of cut through here because we're grabbing bigger areas so if I go back there See how it's beautifully re-established the clouds there. And this is how we'd go through the process. However, we get to a point now, the usual workflow before used to be you go control J, create another uh, duplicate layer and because you don't want to destroy the original and then you flip between it to see what you were doing at the bottom. Um, this could be the way that you could use the in-paint tool, but I'm going to show you a much much better way which is a non-destructive way which I to my knowledge uh, affinity range is the only one that has this well they they have brilliant other tools if you come here to their live filters these are all non-destructive and I think the power of the affinity tools the affinity range of products is that they they are building this whole non-destructive ecosystem in your tool set so that you you have the flexibility of moving in between so this is what we commonly would be aware of we've removed the thing and uh, we either got to reference an old photo or if we want to bring anything back it's going to be undo 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 okay i'm going to just move the history palette tool right back to its original and switch this lock off so we have this layer so 
how is it different in Affinity Photo? Let's get into that. We go again to the InPaint brush tool, but this time we go and we create a layer. We have another pixel layer and let me just call this chip because I am going to remove the chip on, from using this layer. How is that possible even? If we go to the context dialog of the InPaint brush tool, you'll go atop here, you'll see there's a drop down that says current layer and there's one that says current layer and below. That means it's referencing where you are working and whatever is below. So you check that, you click that and that must show up there. And now the magic begins. So I'm not on the background layer, this original photo, I'm on a blank, if I switch this one off, I'm on a blank layer which I called a pixel layer which I called chip. But now because I have this set here for my in painting brush tool, look what happens. I still go and it looks all the same. Boom, pops your uncle and it's gone. But is it really gone if I go here now and I switch this layer off? It's still there. So this is totally non-destructive. How are they able to do that? I'm going to switch the background layer off and you'll see what's happened. So when you created a new layer and you chose current layer and below, when you use the in paint brush tool, it painted into that selection area the awareness of what was around and placed this over the original photo. So if I have to go here now and I select, can you see what's happened? It's created this excellent, excellent in painting ability. Now I haven't moved it to the correct space. I'm, I made a bit of a mess, but that's where it originally was. Okay, so it creates this area. This now leads us to the fact that if I want to remove this area at the bottom, I can go in paint and say I'm going to remove this name. Okay, it's just pulling through there. There we go. So it's removed. So if I take this away, you can see those two. Okay, so they're both on this layer. But that's not only what you can do because now if you want to work with the one and the other, you're a bit stuck. If you, for example, want to remove the chip but leave the name in or whatever reason, it's all stuck on the same layer. So let's look at what a better option would be is to, because you have this non-destructive workflow, just go create another layer. Let's call this um, uh, my number. Okay, so I'm going to use this my number. Come down here, select that area. Just keep keep on editing as if you'd normally be editing. So you've got it nice cleared away and you've done that on this layer. So if I disable this layer, the number is still there. Um, then I can go and create another one and call this logo. You get the idea. Um, come there nicely. I'm on that. Make sure you're on the, the layer when you do the edit. And we're on that logo layer. There's a bit of tweaking there. Uh, maybe a bit of tweaking here. Uh, these clouds are a bit mushy. Just get them nice and back to the area. Okay. Whatever you're doing on this space here is now happening on this logo. If I click here, the logo is still there. So if I remove these layers or, or disable the layers, the original image is still at the bottom. This for me is just next level brilliant, non-destructive. I'm going to do my last one, take these corners away. Just click up there, click corners. I get excited about, you know, intuitive tools like this. So I'll just go corners and maybe that edge, that corner. Um, and there we have it. Corners back, corners gone. Okay, so hopefully you get excited about this. It now gives you the option to, to go and start working. And I'm going to just do my last one. I won't even label that and do the world thing. If you are working here now and you go, okay, I want to put the text down here, um, but I'm not sure where it would be aligned, where was the original. So you could go and now undo if it was the old system, you could create the original, a duplicate and look where it is. But for now I could go, okay, let me go my number, disable that and then, you know, put a marking area, put my text there where it's lying when I'm happy with it. I just go and hide it again. That for me is genius. Okay, so hopefully that's going to help you 
your workflow and just make things work 10 times better. I love Affinity, love Affinity Designer. So I take it right back, back into Affinity uh, Designer and we're sitting there with the exact same things. See what the beauty is, is, is literally that you can go do the thing in photo when you bring it back here because the files are the same format. You have the same ability to now manipulate them. You, in designer you might not have the ability to do the in paint brush but why is it an issue? You can just go to photo and do it and very soon one of these days we'll probably have like they have in uh, Affinity Publisher we'll have the three um, programs that we'll be able to flip between and we wouldn't need to then load the second program etc. But it's it's not a train smash to flip between the two programs. Okay, so hopefully that excites you and keeps you going being creative. Have a fantastic day and God bless.